Good morning, everyone. Uh, wow, uh, this is a, a packed room. Thank you so much for uh, coming uh, today to sit in on this presentation. Uh, my name is Daniel Powell. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Optimal Dynamics. Uh, we are a New York-based software company that helps logistics and truckload companies make better decisions and help them automate their operations. Uh, today is artificial decision intelligence and logistics. Um, you're not gonna see any math. We're gonna really try to focus in on one particular topic today. What the heck is this? And really actually where does it fit within a logistics operation? And what are the actual problems that it solves? Uh, you may hear online the word AI and it's often thrown around like a magic wand that can solve all problems, but that's often far from the truth. Uh, and it's, there's some really exciting benefits and then also one other key takeaway, something that we can agree on, that logistics is hard. It's really hard. And so is math. Now, if it wasn't Monday morning, I would ask everyone to do the test that I usually do, which is let's multiply two numbers in our head, 36 times 87. But it's Monday, so I won't ask anyone to do that. The two responses that you typically get from this are, I'm just not gonna solve this, I'll wait for him to continue his presentation, or you pull out your calculator and you do this. And so when there are more permutations in an 100 truck carrier than grains of sand in the world, how are we supposed to get everything out of these networks when we can't multiply two numbers in our head? And it's not a function of just humans or that you and us are bad at math. People are just bad at math. We're incredible at solving people issues, but we're really, really bad at solving math problems. And when you look at making a truckload company more efficient, we look at, at one big math problem. Now this is exactly why companies like us work day in and day out to develop solutions to help companies make their operations more efficient, to allow them to ask better strategic questions and operational questions. Before we get into how this is actually applied within a solution, let's dive a little bit more into you know, what is artificial decision intelligence and how do we use it to make better decisions and what kind of information do we actually need to get a computer to make a decision. And so this is kind of where we go with ahead and break it down. And we kind of call it the five layers of intelligence, which is information acquisition, communication and storage, transactions and execution, and then you have learning and statistics and decisions. Now, as long as any of us have been running our business, we've all been doing the bottom three. We've been getting calls from our customers, we've been writing things down, we've been executing and make de making decisions. And we've worked to progress that process through time. You know, at first we had whiteboards where we noted everything down to make better decisions. We've transitioned to a place where we have a centralized database, a centralized pane of glass for us to store this information, i.e. the cloud, that really allowed us to really drive our business forward. This industry has really progressed over the last five to 10 years to where we not only have a system of record, a place for us to learn and store data, but now we can also enrich it with high fidelity data visibility providers like Project 44, telematics solution providers like Samsara and Omnitrax, means that we don't only have this single pane of glass, but we have a single pane of glass that has really high quality data, for the most part. But data in enough to where we can actually make actionable decisions. And this has allowed the industry to sort of progress one click. And this is really where most of us see, you know, uh, uh, analytics or AI within our applications, which is learning and statistics. This might be a dynamic ETA for when my truck might get there. This might be um, a automated price, but it is not a decision. To make a decision, you not only have to have the right information, but you also have to have the right solutions and math to understand what is going on in this problem and actually execute a way to solve it. And this is really where the last layer is. But it really takes the evolution of progress of building up this underlying databases to enable systems and companies to make better decisions. And this is when you look at a company like Optimics, exactly where we refit it. You know, we're not a marketplace or an IoT service provider. We layer on top of the systems that companies already have to help them make better decisions. Now, this isn't the first time that a company has tried to help companies make better decisions. I did mention that I'm the co-founder of Optimics. The other co-founder happens to be my father. I was born into logistics like many people in the logistics industry. And he's worked in his career since trucking became deregulated, literally writing the book on how do you solve problems in logistics. And they tried with initial approaches, and some of them were successful. The math 
uh, people will call these deterministic optimization problems. But what this means is these are optimization problems that computers can solve, and they assume that they know everything. They need all known information to make a decision, which I'm sure many of you who are in the logistics business knows is hard to come by. So let's go dive in, kind of as I promised, where does this technology start to really drive impact with an operation? So let's look at the planning scenario that a logistics company has to make. We sit down in an 8 a.m., we have our drivers in green and our loads in the blue circles. We start our day by figuring out which drivers are closest to our loads, making those dispatches. As the day progresses, we do it again, and then we find ourselves in the little predic uh, predicator. We don't have drivers close to our loads, we're at risk of a service failure or just a long empty move that's gonna hurt our bottom line. Now, where a global optimization or even these deterministic optimization solutions can do a good job is that they can start to look at the entire network. And they can make some non-obvious choices that really drive efficiencies. Now, this is really cool stuff, but these approaches have been around for 10 or 15 years. And they really haven't driven the ball forward for one specific reason. Let's go focus down on the driver in Georgia, moving to South Carolina. And let's figure out what he has to do next. Now this driver probably has maybe two more options. A load going into Chicago that's gonna drive $250 a profit to the network, and a load going to the Newark area, only, only about $50 a profit. Now if you take any sort of person or a computer, what is it gonna do? It's gonna solve the best decision with the information that it knows today. And so it's gonna go ahead and chase that carrot. And it's gonna take that driver into load one, have a couple other options once they get there, set them off on this tour with long empties to home with a low average profit. Now, if we could have systems that could begin to learn the value of drivers in certain regions and the uncertainties that might present itself in these networks, we might go ahead and take load two. And while it's not as so obvious on the surface because it's a driver moves into a worse, seemingly worse region and further away from home with less money, we know there's a really high chance of that driver being at the right place at the right time to have a couple options to take a couple loads. That sets them off on this efficient network with close empties of home driving an average profit. And this is really where it starts to have this impact of applying these artificial decision intelligence practices into logistics. Because the real difficulty about this problem is we have to make that decision today when most of the information, anything in gold, is unknown. We don't actually have the information to optimize on. And this is one of the key components that makes driving decisions in an automated way, at least for a computer, so difficult. Humans, we have something called our gut. We have that intuition because we've been working there for 10 years that we always know that you know, this driver moves into this region. But we do it in a very limited capacity. We can't see all the network effects, all the downstream effects, all of our customer constraints. We don't understand the demand forecasting throughout our entire operations. And so while we do have this hunch of maybe I won't take load one, that load two decision is generally done in a very limited way. Now this seems like a perfect opportunity for just a computer to solve simply, just pass it over to a computer. But this is where it gets really hard. Very small math, but this is where the math community calls this a sequential decision problem. We do learn, do learn, do learn. And this breakup of having to optimize when most of the problems are known creates a lot of issues for a computer. One, the information doesn't exist. And so we have to be able to create models that can learn your operations, learn your customers, to actually give us maybe a good sense of what might happen. And we also have to control the problem. This is the most geeky slide we're gonna show, but this kind of gives an illustration of how big these problems get if they're just solved in a brute force way. As we progress through our days, the options and combinations of events that we have to solve grow very, very quickly. And this is why that with typical approaches throughout the years, we haven't been able to solve this problem. And this is really where kind of this intelligent operations start to apply. We have something that we like to call high dimensional AI or artificial decision intelligence. It's one small component of our operation, but it really does drive a major impact for our customers and our product. And it solves a bunch of key things that have really caused issues within applying computers to logistics operations, which are one, for the first time is that we can break apart these problems in ways so that computers can solve it now. It's not much help for you guys to have a super detailed system 
that takes five, six, ten hours to solve. That decision has long passed. And it's also not helpful for you guys to have you know, a small, lightweight system doing, you know, attaching one driver to a load and not thinking about the big problem, and it solves quickly, but it's so lightweight, you spend more time fixing the problems than you do impacting it. For the first time here, we not only have a system that can solve these problems in near real time, but we can begin to learn about the downstream effects of your network and the uncertainties. We can learn that load two is the better option and not load one, because there's a 97% chance that that driver is going to be a good place at a good time to drive really big profit opportunities for your network. It allows us to look weeks into the future and learn about the probability of being able to accept a load, even though we might not know exactly how that driver is going to get there. And this is really one of the key big breakthroughs that actually allows us to solve these problems. When you look at it against typical math approaches, for anyone who does like to geek out on these, we just have one slide, uh, and you apply it uh, to our technology, which is you know this artificial decision intelligence, to uh, legacy linear optimizations. This is the classic um, uh, optimization, dispatch optimization systems that have been around for 20 years, and neural networks. For anyone who doesn't know what a neural network is, this is often what's thrown around as AI within the industry. It's you know the thing that allows a Tesla to see the car lanes, but it doesn't do a very good job at operating a logistics network. While they can do things like demand forecasting, the ability to have systems that can learn about the uncertainties, and there are so many uncertainties in a logistics network, and be able to process that into its decision is exactly where these components can actually drive uh, real impact to operations. When you look at sort of solving the overall problem within a logistics solution, it takes more than just one hammer to solve it as well. When you look at here, and we're not going to dive too deep into it, these are sort of what you call the four classes of policies. And each policy would be sort of a bucket of AI or statistical approaches to solve these problems. Trucking happens to be that sort of uh, difficult problem where you need to use all four approaches. So even that slide where I showed you a couple steps back where we were able to di dissect these problems, which is the VFAs, um, and actually drive actionable decisions in a reduced amount of time, is really only one out of four approaches that we actually ha have to use to solve these problems. And we wish we came through a simpler way. Optodynamics and our solutions are a byproduct of 40 years of working on these problems in industry uh, and trying to figure out simple approaches. We've been able to distill it down so we can pass it to users in a simple approach, but the problem isn't simple. It takes really robust effects to actually drive uh, decisions. For anyone who does want to geek out on it, and we're going to quickly go past this slide, you can go to tinyurl.com slash odwhitepaper. It's a really great resource for anyone who wants to dive into the weeds. We're always uh, trying to show people kind of the math behind the scenes. It's hard, and <laughs> we don't really want to push people else <laughs> to try to solve it because it helps us lose our hair and sell, sell our products. But this allows anyone to dive into the industry. Uh, now, when we go ahead and bring it to the market, uh, it's really cool to have artificial intelligence. It's really cool to solve sub-problems and really understand where that artificial intelligence can drive decisions, learn about downstream effects, understand uncertainties. But at the end of the day, you have to boil these solutions down to be able to drive distinct actions for a business. When we go about this, we sort of break these down into three distinct buckets that almost every logistics and trucking company has to deal with. These are strategic decisions, tactical decisions, and your real-time execution or dispatch decisions. Your strategic decisions live from you know, maybe a week, a month, or a year out. Your tactical decisions are all around you know, what loads do you move, where are there gonna be issues with your network, how do we redistribute resources within our operations that you're often making one day to 10 days out. And then you have the real-time execution decisions, which are you know, which driver takes which load. And so one of the things that we've been able to do is distill down these analytics into distinct actions that users can use in simple interfaces. And this has been a really big step. Even while we've had the early days of having analytics within logistics, it's always been a difficult item to use. You needed an advanced degree to kind of work through the systems. But now we're finally getting to a point where these systems can take in enough detail and provide the simple decisions. This is kind of where the artificial decision intelligence intelligence kind of builds in, where we can actually drive actionable decisions for our customers, and we've had some really exciting results. 
And so there is real world benefits from solving these little problems that may not seem so important, but at the end of the day can drive huge impacts for businesses. Take our strategic system. It allows you to ask questions like driver retention strategies by modeling your companies at a high level of detail. Maybe you're running through a merger and acquisition or you're just trying to grow. We had one customer over a quarter drive over 16 separate strategic studies using this system and it was able to over double the size of their business um, over the course of a year, guided by these decisions. And why was that? It was because they were able to model their company at a very high level of detail. So as they made decisions in the real world, they had a very, very clear understanding about what the impact would be. And this kind of goes back into, now we finally have a system that can learn and take in the details of your operations. It means we can now ask action-oriented decisions for your company. And these can drive really big impacts for your operations. Or take a load acceptance. Our load acceptance tools have shown values in the tens of millions of dollars for some of the largest companies. However, when you look at having a system that can learn and make decisions on which loads to move, maybe a week, two weeks into the future, blending in business units, asset light units, asset units, you can start to get some really big impacts as well. By having the system make actionable decisions on every load that's moving through your network, you're not sort of faulting at any sort of decisions or bowing to customer requests that aren't gonna work for your network or loads that just aren't, that look profitable on the surface, but at the end of the day, weren't profitable for your operations. We had one company within just one small subset of the region was able to drive over 400K of additional revenue and something that's working up to almost a million dollars a year. A really exciting result, but once again, this is the distillation of a system making these decisions, understanding the downstream effects to the operations, understanding the goals of the business, and driving these actionable decisions to users. And there's so much opportunity that sits under the feet of all these operations, we can really start to apply these systems into actionable ways to drive impact into these operations or take a real-time dispatching system. A lot of the times there's impacts, some of the time it's just having a system that can make decisions on a day-to-day -day basis and not need human intervention for every single decision at hand. And this is where real-time dispatching can come in. By having a system that can make you know, those 80% of the decisions, we can really reduce the time people are spending on block and tackling through uh, dispatch decisions and allow them to focus in on the people problems. Computers are really solve at bad, really bad at solving pe people problems. People are really bad at solving math problems. And so this is the first step of kind of swapping those things, putting us in the right seats and allowing us to solve the problems that we're really inherently good at. Um, uh, that's it for today. Hopefully it was a bit of informative. If you'd like to learn more a little bit about Optimal Dynamics, we're in Booth 101, you can't miss us as you walk in. Uh, and I think they have some time carved out for Q&A. Thank you.